I've been thinking long and hard how to talk about um, various fallacies and um, biases. Knowing about these are important part of critical skill of critique of information. How we filter them through, how we skim them through, how we understand and interpret information, particularly at the age or time of paradigm shift and post truth. Uh, good afternoon, this is 14th of November 2023. I'm again at Battersea Power Station. The weather is quite rainy and windy out there. However, for tomorrow, the forecast tells us cold, cool, but um, sunny weather. So, hopefully, I will be much more successful with the outdoors recordings. So, fallacies and biases. There is, There are approximately, on the top of my head, approximately five different significant fallacies. And... Uh, about a dozen and a little bit less uh, biases mostly cognitive biases so these we need to be able to have a working knowledge of really day in day out some of them are changing some of them are um, culturally contextually heavily dependent um, and of course time plays an important part in all of them. Time, uh, the least known, the least understood, yet perhaps one of the most powerful feature of our universe. Only two things we know about it, and one of them is only flows in one direction, it never flows back, um, and on the other hand, it's pervasive, it goes through everything and anything, every and any thing. Okay, so the first fallacy, and I'm going to use my little flashcards once again, is the false cause fallacy. Concomitance and co-occurrence are not the same thing. It does not necessarily mean that things are occurring together, even if they could be related, if there could be a causative relationship between the two, that... Uh, there is one and this is where we need to be very careful with the assumptions we make and when we communicate assumptions or want to confirm whether some assumptions are actually factually valid or not but we kind of express them as a statement because they easily become false accusations and that we need to be really, really careful with. So, for instance, if um, something breaks down at home, and if I tell my partner, oh, so you've broken the this and that, and you never told me, or you didn't do anything to get this mended, that may be valid, it might have, might have had happened, but we have no way of knowing, because we weren't there, we didn't witness it. And immediately it becomes an accusation that may or may not be true, based on an assumption. Moreover, if we keep repeating it, and that fits into the context of we having a breaking down relationship with our partner, um, if we had uh, big grudges held against each other for a little while, or in the past there were similar experiences then turned out to be there was an acting out of anger um, from one party or another out of immaturity then it sounds almost logical or, or um, rational but those things just happened um, sort of concomitantly like uh, the estrangement between us the argument the disagreement between us and the breaking down a certain piece of equipment or um, um, a certain um, 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 item um, at the place we cohabit in, but we're not always together in at the very same time. So the concomitance and the co-occurrence does not necessarily mean correlation. Concomitance and co-occurrence does not necessarily mean correlation. 
we need to be really careful about it, how we phrase, how we communicate such phenomena, even if we just want to check our assumptions as such. And this is particularly important when we do this in an environment, in a culture, in a situation, in a language that is not native to us. These are the elements are generally not being taught in any school or any education, let alone when it comes to learning languages, particularly as, the, as these days most of us, many of us, learning uh, foreign, um, not first languages, the same way as we did learn first languages from the environment, television, so through a filtered media. But with our first language, we had the entire experience of life in real time. But with such second languages and third languages, or learned later in life, learned uh, languages, we only get things through certain filters. So we must not think that's the entirety of life experience in the culture to which that language is native to. Again, so concomitance or co-occurrence are not correlation. There may or may not be, that's only an assumption. We should not and must not treat it as a fact, because as we know, if we use facts instead of, um, if, if we use assumptions instead of facts, and the next time when we go to sleep and there is a bit of missing information from a phenomenon we live through, from an experience, we create a false memory. And once that memory goes into the long-term memory in the brain, when it's recalled, it's almost impossible to distinguish whether the original memory, the original story, because the human brain can only store information in short stories under categories. So it's almost impossible to recall that information in a way that we would know whether it was used based on facts or assumptions. And whenever we use assumptions, the chances for them to be incorrect are greater. This is the reason why when in court, um, witnesses to an event, like that would be an accident, for instance, court to the court to make a statement. And people who were in the same time, the same place, make statements so widely different. That's the physiological explanation behind of it. So, once again, concomitance and concurrence do not mean correlation. And we need to be careful with phrasing some questions to one another. This is a short video for today um, on uh, 14th of November 2023 from Batsipao Station. Have a good day.